Hello and welcome to another decrepit gaming video. Today I'm going to be talking about my plans for the old world Warhammer Fantasy Battle in the modern guise, the old world. As you know, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I my first army getting back into the game again is the Tomb Kings. I always it's an army I always liked. I actually would prefer if it was the undivided undead from the good old days of 4th and 5th edition, but alas, in fact I think it might have been 5th edition where they did split them up. Originally I had access to mummies, all the characters, you know, the Von Karsteins, Nagash, but um, it took me a wee while to get my head around the Tomb Kings and the fact that they had split them into two separate factions. Obviously, it uh, allowed them to make... They obviously hoped that they would both do really well. And everybody knows that the Vampire Counts are the more popular of the two. Probably due, due to uh, Pulp Fiction and popular culture and the fact there's an awful lot of movies about vampires and they tend to be quite popular but anyway i'm getting off topic my tomb kings are far from finished i've painted up a fair chunk of the stuff as you're well aware i hope you're well aware and i i'm going to continue until i have what i deem to be a pretty finished army with the unlikely event of Games Workshop ever releasing the new stuff for them, which of course I will pick up if, as and when they do in the future. But I want to talk briefly about the Tomb Kings and my plans for them. So I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see. So let's start with items that I've picked up for the Tomb Kings, obviously. The journal. I hope you guys have been able to get a hold of the books by the way. The, I know they were and probably still are very hard to get. This one here and the Bretonian one is actually quite available where I live um, because unfortunately there hasn't been a huge uptake of old world players. There are some but there haven't been as many as I would have hoped to have seen but the journal is not an absolute necessity. There's two armies of infamy in it. You get the rules for Setra. Of course, if you have a Tomb King's army, you're going to want Setra. Even if you rarely use them, you just have to have Setra. You know, it's just the way it is. King of the Undead. King of the Tomb King Undead, anyway. Um, there are some other nice characters in it. And there are two armies. The Mortuary Cult and the other one, whatever it's called. You see, they're not that great. I can't even remember what they're called. Uh, let's see. Sorry for... I should have had all this planned out, but yeah, like everything, I plan nothing. Tomb Kings of Camry, Nakaran Royal Host. Royal Host. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, it's all right. There's nothing in here which is any better than what you get in the Ravening Hordes book, which I hope you've been able to get. Hopefully you've been able to pick up the Ravening Hordes and I can't get the Armies of Fantasy. Just can't get it. Hopefully these things will come back into stock. But anyway, getting back to what my plans are, getting sidetracked. Uh, these guys, you should be able to pick these up. If you want to, if you're a Tomb Kings player, you probably should. Um, the nice thing is you can make either the Necropolis Knights or the Sepulchral Stalkers. Sepulchral? Sepulchural? <laughs> Stalkers. Um, they're both pretty good. I will probably assemble the Knights with this box because the Knights have more attacks and the more attacks will like more attacks. Why would you not like more attacks? So these will probably get turned into the snake surfers. 
Um, and of course I will put assembly and painting videos up for how I can possibly paint them the quickest <laughs> while hopefully keeping them reasonable looking. So that's two units that'll be coming. One to start with, one to follow. Another box I was able to pick up. Necro Sphinx. Necro Sphinx, you can make either the Necro Sphinx, the Tomb King and War Sphinx, or a War Sphinx. So you have three options. You're only going to be able to make one of them, I'm pretty sure. The Necro Sphinx is way too different to the other two. You might be able to assemble a War Sphinx and then put a Tomb King in it. You could do that. So there's really two options in the box. Ah, this one will be getting made into a Necro Sphinx. <coughs> Excuse me, still got <coughs> Touch Act Gold and the Tomb King on foot. So that'll be two more videos coming up in the future. Not too distant future either. What else have we got? Tomb Scorpion. <coughs> In my opinion, one of the best units in uh, in the Tomb King's army list. It has Monster Slayer at 70 points. It can take a beating and it can give a beating out. Yeah, they won't last forever, but they're 70 points. You can have multiple in an army. Unfortunately, you'll see this is metal. Nothing wrong with metal. I have no nothing against metal models. Never have had. <coughs> I don't even think I'm going to be able to edit those coughs out. I apologise. But what this was was incredibly expensive. <coughs> Bought from eBay. Fifty-five pounds, British pounds, which is what seventy-five, eighty dollars, American which this is a model that I paid eight, eight or nine pounds for at maximum back in the day. Anyway, <coughs> if you want them, you've got to pay for them. That's the way it works. So I managed to pick one up. Um, I would like more than one in my army, but I'll start with one. These metal models are also an absolute pain in the rear end to build and assemble. It's not that there's too many parts. It's that the parts don't like to glue together. So I am actually, uh, you're going to need milliput or green stuff to help you assemble this. You can use thick super glue, but you'll regret it. So my advice to you is if you're assembling any of these big old multi-part models, um, get some milliput or some green stuff. Sorry for the break in recording there. I had to go and get a drink. Couldn't stop coughing. Great. Right, back to it. So, Tomb Scorpions. <clears throat> One of the best units in the undead um, Tomb King's army list, in my opinion. A box of new metal models from GW. And there will be uh, an assembly video and painting video of these as well. New Shabdi. <clears throat> These ones have great bows. I'm going to be doing a decent size unit of each, both with great bows and both with uh, the big kopesh that the other guys have, or great weapons, which they probably are. Ushabdi are decent, like an undead troll, kind of decent. They're decent, they're not great. Um, but out of a sense of completeness, I'll be adding a unit of each to my army. 
I will be picking up another Necro Sphinx box in the future as well, and I will turn it into uh, the War Sphinx. Just so I have the options, and so my army, I want to I wanna have quite a big army. Give me plenty of choice, plenty to choose from, make the army different, so you don't know what you're going to be facing every time. <clears throat> what else have we got currently? A bone giant, or as he's now known as a necrolith colossus. This is a resin one. Um, I look forward to painting him. I'm all, I'll be doing a video on that as well. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> what else? I will. <clears throat> Sorry. I'll also be in the market for at least one Screaming Skull Catapult. Probably just the one. And a Casket of Souls. I think the Casket of Souls is excellent in the rules. And I recommend that you pick one up if you're doing a Tomb King's army. Um, I might go into a video at some point on what I deem to be a good Tomb King's army, but I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs either. I mean, buy the rules, read the rules, play the game a few times, and you'll know what's good and you'll know what's bad. The only thing I'll say is, <clears throat> initially, build most of your skeletons as spearmen. Spears are a no-brainer in fantasy battle. They always have been. They get to fight in two ranks. So when someone charges into your unit of skeletons and wipes the front rank out, at least you have the, the second rank that can fight back. For an extra point a model, it's a no-brainer to do it. You might want some to make some archers. <clears throat> or if you really want uh, like chaff units that you can just throw out and forget about, then certainly take sword and... Uh, or one-handed weapon and shield miniatures, but to me you may as well pay the extra point. At least you've got a unit that uh, can fight back and hopefully hold its own on the battlefield. So that's current plans for the Tomb Kings. What else have I got up my <clears throat> wizardry sleeve? Don't even have a wizard sleeve, I don't know why I said that. <clears throat> So what else have I got up my sleeve? I picked this up at the weekend. I was fortunate enough to be able to get a copy in my local gaming shop. And <clears throat> already having the, ra having the Ravening Hordes, I have the Orc and Goblin army lists. And this is actually a good journal, I think. Simply because it has uh, the Orc and Goblin Tribes Troll Horde. When I first heard about the Troll Horde, I thought, oh, it's an, ar an army entirely of trolls. It's not. It just can have more trolls than a regular Orc army. But it does have some Troll Horde special rules and enhanced regeneration. That alone is... A good enough reason to take this army list. So I'm going to be building an Orc and Goblin Troll Horde army. I'll probably just build an Orc and Goblin army but I will make sure I have the option of using it as a Troll Horde. Um, there will be official models and there will be unofficial models but I'll be doing painting for all the units and all the characters and all the war machines. And even if it's an unofficial model, it'll transfer to an official model if you're able to get the official model. <clears throat> I wouldn't worry too much about trying to obtain official models, especially if they're a fortune. If Games Workshop aren't going to support the system, get the models where, you ha where you're able to get them, in whatever way you're able to get them. Um, 
if you're if you're playing these games and you're buying these rule books, I was able to pick this up for sixteen pounds. I don't know what the recommended retail price is, probably about twenty for a forty-four page book. Sorry, tell a lie. Forty-eight page book. But it is a good wee book and it is worth buying. I'll probably pick most of the journals up because it's nice to know what potentially you can come up against without being, as we used to say, beardy about it and, you know, wanting to know your opponent's army inside out. I'm not a tournament player. I play the game to have fun, but it is still nice not to be completely and utterly surprised every time you play the game, to know a little bit about uh, what you could potentially be facing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, the Orc and Goblin army will start small. I'll probably build 500 points worth of stuff and work from there. Um, I'll start with some goblins, maybe move on to a black orc on a, a wyvern, just because it's a black orc on a wyvern. How can you not want that? I certainly do. I want the option of having it in my army. Um, that's really all I have for you. Uh, letting you know that the old world is far from forgot about. And I have big plans for the future for lots of battle reports. Um, I bumped into an old friend who still has all his fantasy battle armies and he had a lot um, so hopefully you will see some of those on the channel in the future and anyway i would like to thank you for watching this video hopefully it hasn't bored you too much and if you haven't clicked subscribe yet you would be doing me a great turn if you did click subscribe we all as youtubers go i hate that term but i suppose i am one in a bizarre sort of twist of fate. We all want to hit that magic thousand number, don't we? So we can become monetized and be millionaires and buy a yacht and sail around. It's not going to happen. <laughs> if I ever make a penny out of this, um, it'll go back into it again because I'll buy models to film and paint or I'll buy some more decent equipment. That's the way this is going to work for me. This is not a money-making scheme. Uh, it was never started with that intention. Um, it's This is to keep me on track with my hobby. This is to make me paint stuff, which would otherwise sit in a box for years, possibly. This is, this is helping me, and hopefully it's helping some of you guys, at least by giving you ideas, maybe, or by helping to increase the community a little bit. Um, I don't expect miracles. Um, I don't have like a Mr. Beast personality or any of that. Um, I only know the guy's name. I don't even know his content, to be honest. But uh, regardless, this is a long time for me to say thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.